What's up guys? Welcome back to the Living Mad channel where I talk to you about how I'm living the American dream. So today's a special day for me. March 27. This is my Marine Corps anniversary. Today is 22 years in the Marine Corps. So as I thought about what I wanted to talk about today, I started thinking of different topics and ultimately I decided, you know, this is my, this is my Marine Corps anniversary. I should do something to commemorate that, that occasion. So I want to start off with giving you a very quick summary of the last 22 years and then give you uh, a few just three or so reflections on what I think about now as I think back in my time in the Marine Corps and where we're at in the Marine Corps today. Now I will tell you this is my personal opinion. This is not to reflect the Marine Corps as a whole whether enlisted officers or otherwise this is just me Fabio and what I think about the Marine Corps today, my past and going into the future. All right, so very quick history on, on me with the Marine Corps. I knew I wanted to be a Marine since I was very young. I saw planes, fighter planes in the sky and thought, that is awesome, that's what I wanted to do. So I joined a JROTC, a military high school, while I was in St. Louis. Moved from New York to St. Louis, entered a military high school there. Got even more interested in the military. It was a Navy high school, but I knew I wanted to go into the Marine Corps. I knew I wanted to be an officer. Unfortunately, uh, now looking back on it, unfortunately, I messed around way too much my junior year of high school. My grades dropped. Come senior year, I didn't take it seriously, didn't take all the classes I needed to, so I couldn't get into college to try to become an officer. I still knew I wanted to join the Marine Corps, so I decided, hey, I'm going to start working, saving for college. About 10 months later, I decided this is going to take way too long. I'm not saving enough to try to pay for college on my own. So I enlisted into the Marine Corps about 10 months after graduating high school. Joined the Marine Corps, went through all the training, started college as soon as I got to my first duty station with the intent of eventually finishing my degree and becoming an officer. Did a couple deployments, one in support of OIF, went and served as a drone instructor at Paris Island, South Carolina from 2005 to 2008, almost four years because of two extensions. Finished that, started college back up again, at this point, I'm about a year and a half, two years of college done. Some of it with classes I had taken, some with training I had received in the military that gave me college credits, some with distance learning classes that I had done through the military and civilian sector that gave me credits. So I continued college again. By this point, I'm a staff sergeant, got promoted to Gurren Sergeant, finished my degree when I was a senior staff sergeant, promoted to Gunny, to Gunner Sergeant, Applied for a commission, got accepted, went to OCS, the basic school, did all the training for that, deployed some more, support of OEF, humanitarian missions, came back to the States, um, and now I'm serving as Marine Officer Instructor at the University of Illinois, so in charge of the ROTC program at the university. So as I think back, being a young high school student at a JROTC, now I'm a major in the Marine Corps, 22 years leading the Marine Corps component of the ROTC program here, it almost feels like it's come full circle. Some of the things that I've done from being a drone instructor for enlisted recruits, being a drone instructor for officers at OCS, I was a company commander as a major at OCS. All these things have sort of built upon themselves to lead to where I am now. And really being an MOI, just kind of the culmination of all these years of experience. So it's been an awesome ride. I can't think of really much that I would want to change from my career. It's really been a blessing in, in the way that it's all worked out. Has it always been perfect? No, far from it. But it's been a great ride and I've enjoyed it so far. So 22 years in a nutshell. I'll try to summarize it as quickly as possible, maybe three minutes or so. So now what I want to give you is my thoughts, a couple of reflections. Like I said, I'm going to give you about three reflections on where I think we're at with the Marine Corps now. The first one, I hear a lot of people say, oh, today's young Marines are lazy. They talk about them being the, the iPhone generation. They spend too much time on their tablets or iPhones playing video games. They're lazy. They're not in shape. I hear all this stuff, right? And I hear it now, especially from some of the older folks talking about the brand new Lance Corporals or the brand new lieutenants. My opinion, and again, this is just me, take it for what it's worth. My opinion is that today's generation is as good as any in our history. Maybe even better. 
So the PT standards, physical fitness standards, had to change a few years ago because too many people were hitting the, the top scores, getting perfect 300 on the physical fitness test, and combat fitness test. That's one indication that Marines are, if not better, definitely as good as they were before. Maybe there were as many Marines getting perfect scores before, but now we raised the standard. You got to do more pull-ups. Uh, the plank changed, but it's very challenging, and the run times got adjusted. So something's changed, reflecting that we're still in good shape. Educationally, some of these young Marines today, oh my God, are so incredibly smart. I can't even tell you. And the thing is, they're growing up with technology. They're growing up with the internet and all this. So they have access to information that when I was growing up, when I was 10, 15, 20 years old, I didn't have access to this information. I didn't have my first computer until I was a, I think a last corporal, maybe a corporal in the Marine Corps. So a couple years into, into the Marine Corps when I had my first computer, and really, at that time, the internet wasn't what it is now. So I didn't have access to all this information. So yes, I was trying to educate myself going to classes. But when I look at the education of some of our younger folks today, our 18 to 24 year olds, it does not compare to what I had at that stage. Now, obviously, this doesn't apply to everybody. Not everybody's going out and trying to get some education and learning stuff. But again, comparing apples to apples, young Marines to young Marines today, I sincerely feel that today's young Marines are phenomenal. Working here at the ROTC at the University of Illinois, I can tell you the midshipmen in our program are amazing. And they're 18 to 22 year olds from freshmen to seniors in college. And I think about where I was at that point. Sure, I was already in the Marine Corps. I was active duty and you could say, you know, that that's a big step toward my future life as an adult. But I was a... Uh, I, I almost said a word I don't want to say. I was a uh, immature Lance Corporal, let's put it that way. Yes, I was a pretty good Marine. I was doing a lot of great things, getting sent on meritorious promotion boards and things like that. But I was doing a lot of bad stuff. I was drinking a lot, partying. Sometimes I would drink and drive. I mean, there were a lot of things that if I caught my Marines doing now, I would definitely hammer them for it. And so on the one hand, I acknowledge the fact that there were leaders who maybe protected me and gave me a chance that I didn't necessarily deserve. On the other hand, I also have to acknowledge that I was just downright lucky. I could have been one of those statistics, somebody who crashed while drinking and driving, maybe killed myself, killed someone else, or maybe didn't kill anybody but still ended my career. So I got extremely lucky that a lot of things that I did worked out in my favor. Today, a lot of the young Marines don't have that, that leeway. It's not that the Marine Corps is a zero defect mentality, but it's getting close to it. So nowadays, if you make mistakes, if you get a DUI, if you do something like that, your career is gonna be done. So Marines now are being held to a higher standard. I really do believe that they're being held to a higher standard. They cannot get away with some of the things that we were doing back in the day. Some of it is good, right? Like hazing, you can't do some of the things you did back in the day. And Marines may say, oh, well that's because the Marine Corps is getting soft. No, we're getting smarter about the way that we train and indoctrinate our new Marines while at the same time making sure that those that push it too far are administratively separated from the Marine Corps so we don't make our environment toxic. So I really do believe today's young generation are far and above better than my generation. Again, my opinion. All right, the second reflection or observation that I have is that the Marine Corps is going through a lot of changes right now. Uh, I'll name a few. There's a greater push for diversity right now which is leading to women being allowed to serve in combat roles, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, push for diversity racially, so trying to bring in more African Americans, more Latinos, brown people like me, Asians, all this stuff, right? So greater push for diversity. Recently, we had some uniform changes that got approved just last week, or actually, no, this week. Uh, hair regulations are changing, finger, uh, nail polish on the fingernails, maternity uniforms. A lot of these changes are because of diversity. Uh, I already talked about the PT standards. Those are changing. Last year in the fall, we had a guidebook come out about talent management. So the way the Marine Corps is trying to reformat or realign its promotion system, trying to figure out how to recruit better, how to retain the right people, how to align the, the rank structure. So a lot of changes going on in the Marine Corps, right? And as I hear the chatter or read the comments or talk to people about some of these changes, some people embrace them, they think they're great, they think they're gonna make the Marine Corps better. Other people think 
This is the downfall of the Marine Corps. Some people say the Marine Corps is getting soft with letting women into combat roles or, or some of the standards that are being changed or the idea of bringing people into the Marine Corps at certain ranks without necessarily having grown through the ranks. So there's a lot of chatter back and forth about all this stuff. I will tell you, me personally, I think for the most part, these changes are good. Especially the talent management part and the diversity part, I think they're good. Diversity, I think is, is beneficial for everybody to bring in people with different thoughts, different concepts, different experiences. It's, it's one thing to say, okay, everybody has to have this SAT score or this fitness score or this, this, or this, that. But you come up with, when, when you have very strict standards requirements, you, you end up with one type of person, which is good for having one kind of culture. But you also leave out a lot of different perspectives, different thoughts that are needed to come up with creative solutions to future problems. So I do think that diversity is good. And as recruiting gets harder, we need to find ways to recruit more and more people. So we need some of these changes to make sure that we're recruiting the right people for, again, the future wars. So honestly, I think a lot of these changes are good. They're gonna to be tough. My question is, how well are they gonna be implemented? There's things that, because people are fighting them so hard, they're, they're hard to bring into our culture, such as women going into combat arms. If you were in a community where you're not used to having women, you can either embrace it or you can fight it. If you fight it, it's gonna make it a whole lot harder to make that transition. Same thing with diversity, same thing with the rank structure. Same thing with a lot of these changes. So I, although I think many of these changes are good, I'm concerned about how we as an organization are gonna, are gonna go through them. And are we gonna adapt or are we not? I will tell you, if you read history of the Marine Corps, the US, but specifically the Marine Corps is what we're talking about. We've gone through stuff like this before. We've gone through challenges, especially with drastic changes, and we've always come out on top. So although I feel a slight bit of concern about how this is gonna play out, I sincerely, sincerely do believe that in the end, we're gonna be just fine. We're gonna figure it out. Because Marines, what's one thing we always say? Adapt and overcome. So we'll figure it out. There's gonna be some growing pains. Some people are gonna fight it and maybe they'll end up getting out. Some people will fight it, stay in and just continue to cause friction. Some of the changes are not good and they're gonna to need to get flushed out and eventually they will because we'll realize it's not the right thing to do. In the end, I honestly believe that it's all gonna work out. So I have no concerns for the future of the Marine Corps. All right, and the last reflection or thought that I kind of want to leave you with is the more time I spend in the Marine Corps, the higher I move up in the food chain and in ranks, the more I realize or start to see, again, from my perspective, my perception, I start to see how much bureaucracy just bogs us down. What do I mean? Let's talk about promotions. I see so many Marines sailors, soldiers, airmen, that are phenomenal people, phenomenal officers, staff NCOs, NCOs, that get out of the military because they're not being promoted or being recognized the way they should be. People that, maybe they're an E5 sergeant in the Marine Corps, and they're working for a gunnery sergeant, E7, with 15 years, who doesn't care about their job, who's only in it because honestly, being in the military is a very steady paycheck, very stable job, a lot of security, family security, job security, health insurance. And so this person doesn't care and is not doing their job, doesn't know their job, doesn't care about the Marines, just kind of going through the motions. In the meantime, you've got the sergeant with only five years, making very, very uh, low salary, still expected to work very long hours, sometimes weekends, deploy, leave the family behind, stresses on the marriage, not being able to spend time around their kids. And, and they're not being recognized with awards, they're not being promoted fast enough. So these things happen because we have to wait a certain timeline to get promoted and stuff like that, while other people ahead of you are making decisions that have negative impact on them and their Marines. So people get frustrated with the promotion system. And again, I mentioned earlier talent management, the Marine Corps is trying to figure out, figure out how to do this better. The goal is by 2025, hopefully we do figure something out because it's definitely hurting our, our retention, uh, recruiting. Same thing, I talked earlier about diversity. Well, it's very difficult to recruit nowadays. Marine Corps still meeting its mission for the most part, but it's not easy. The, the military right now has a love-hate relationship, or society, I should say, has a love-hate relationship, relationship 
with the military. Some people are all about it. They're very patriotic, supportive. Some people are anti-military, want world peace, which obviously, really, we all want world peace. We all wish we could do it with the military. But there is some world peace, so we need a military. But some people are against the military, or growing the military, or the budget of the military. So that causes a lot of conflict, which leads into bureaucracy with budgets, trying to get money for ships, aircraft, tanks, weapons, training, salaries of the military service members. So there's a lot of bureaucracy that really bogs us down, that makes things so much harder, so much more difficult than they need to be. And really, as I start to look outside of the military, I see a lot of the same things in government, in nonprofit organizations, in so many different places. And what I realize is once something gets big enough, it really requires a large system, a large enterprise, large government, whatever you want to call it, to manage it all. But the larger something gets, the harder it gets to manage, the more pieces you got to have in the system, in the puzzle, to manage it all. And as you add pieces, the, the bureaucracy, the red tape, the hurdles you got to go over just get harder and harder. So that's something that, as I think about it all, it concerns me and it's it's on my mind a lot i talk to my students a lot about how how things are going in the marine corps what are things that maybe we can change to make things a little better with retention promotion assignments policy and all these things so that they start thinking about okay what kind of future do i want to see for the marine corps because the students i work with now like i said earlier 18 to 22 year olds they are the future of the marine corps these are the people that are going to be the colonels generals and admirals of our service when I'm old and retired. So I want them to start thinking about those things now to hopefully help eliminate some of that bureaucracy, make things better for the future. So those are my three reflections. Now what I will tell you in summary is, despite everything I've said, as I, as I look back on my 22 years of service, I absolutely love it. I knew when I was young that I wanted to serve, but I wasn't 100% sure if I was gonna stay in for 20 years. I thought I did, but I wasn't 100% sure. So college was a backup to either commission or get out if I needed to. I've helped make sure that my finances are in order. So if I retire today based on my military retirement, my investments, I can maintain the exact same standard of living that I have now for the rest of my life. I can live to be 100 years old. If I retire today, never have to work again a day in my life. And so that gives me a lot of freedom, but it also gives me the ability to decide, okay, now that I have hit 22 years, I wasn't sure if I was going to hit 20. I wasn't sure if I was going to stay past 20. But now I'm past 20. I'm about to execute orders this summer for another three years. So that's going to put me at 25. So now that I'm at this point, I feel a sense of freedom that my finances bring me because I don't have to stay in the military for a paycheck. I don't need the health insurance. I, it's My health insurance is secured now. There's a lot of things that are already set for me for life after the Marine Corps. So now when I serve, what I think about is what can I do to help me, help my family, help my Marines, help my service, help the nation, help the world. So it's more about, it. it's always had that, that aspect of service, right? But now that my personal needs and those of my family are taken care of, that aspect of service just gets bigger because I don't have to worry about a paycheck anymore. I don't have to worry about me and my family being taken care of. So now I can focus more on everything outside of me. And that's why I'm doing videos like this because now I feel I have time, a little bit more experience, not a lot, a little bit more experience, a little bit more knowledge to try to share with the world. And so this is my way of preparing for life after the Marine Corps. What I want to do after the Marine Corps is to continue to be of service in some way. Could be teaching like I'm doing now, could be running a nonprofit, could be starting my own nonprofit, could be volunteering with different organizations throughout the world. I have no idea, but it's going to be something of service. And that's something that the Marine Corps has taught me, ingrained in me, and really helped me develop over the years. And for that, I am amazingly grateful for my experience. There are plenty of people who serve, who hate their time at the Marine Corps. And it's all the services because we all have our culture, so different people love it, different people hate it. I have loved it. I still love being in the Marines. I love being around Marines, especially the young ones. They, they, they fill me with that fire, that excitement. It make me feel young. Even though I'm in my 40s, they make me feel young. 
And the fact that I want to be the best kind of leader I can be pushes me to try to excel, whether it's physically, knowing my job, whether it's the long hours at work. They push me, they drive me forward to be a better version of myself than honestly I would be without them. Sometimes I think about what kind of person would I be if I were not in this role as a leader of Marines. And it's scary because honestly, I don't know if I have the discipline to keep myself at this level of performance without having the pressure of wanting to perform and excel and set the example for my young Marines. So they, being around them, working around them is amazing. I love it. And, and it's something that I'm really going to miss when I leave the Marine Corps. All right, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, like I said, these are just my thoughts, not the Marine Corps, not the government, not anybody else. This is just me. 22 years of service today. I wanted to celebrate it. I wanted to talk a little bit about how the Marine Corps has formed me and what I think about it now. If you're, join, if you're joining the Marine Corps, if you're in the Marine Corps, if you're already out of the Marine Corps, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, especially if you're uh, an old timer like me or even older. Maybe you served in Vietnam or something like that and you want to share your thoughts on, on your time in the Marine Corps or what you think about the Marine Corps now, I would love to hear your thoughts because the Marine Corps is something I can talk about for days and days on end and never get bored. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button so it gets pushed out by the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more, subscribe so you know when the next video come out. See you in the next one. Deuces.